So when I was a little kid, I went to Catholic school. At that point, the only thing I'd heard about patents had to do with shiny leather shoes and whether they should be at the bottom of some uniforms. Upon reflection, I learned more about patents, which comes in handy hosting this show. Two of the world's most famous inventors took patents, almost as seriously as their high-flying invention itself. Yes, wrong or right, these brothers had a strong affection for patent protection. We know them for their accomplishments in the world of aviation. But one also could argue that we know Wilbur and Orville Wright because they fought to link their names to those innovative pursuits by pursuing patents, a painstaking process that came at a cost. The Wrights were frankly in over their head when they applied for that first patent in March of 1903. Neither of them had applied for a patent before. Not surprisingly, their patent application was rejected. The next patent was far more thorough in its explanations, and eventually they did get their patent protection in 1906. I met Matt Anderson of the Henry Ford outside the Wright brothers' home. Where did the Wright brothers stand on the issue of patenting? The Wrights realized very early on that, that a patent would be essential to their invention. It gave them the protection they needed legally and financially to continue their work. If the work of invention combined with the headache of patent pursuits wasn't enough to consume the brothers, there were layers of opposition at play as well. The Wrights sued just about anybody and everybody who they felt was infringing upon their patent rights, but undoubtedly their greatest adversary was a fellow by the name of Glenn Curtis. Curtis came up with some pretty clever ideas of his own. He's generally credited with inventing the seaplane, for example, and he developed a different control system. He used smaller winglets called ailerons that would move and then help the airplane to steer. So it was a different mechanism than the Wrights, but the same basic concept, changing the shape of the wing to affect steering. In 1909, the Wrights sued Glenn Curtis over his use of ailerons, beginning a years-long legal conflict, a conflict that would ultimately have at least one casualty. Wilbur passed away in 1912 from typhoid fever, but Orville and, and Catherine, the Wright brother's sister, always maintained that it was the strain of fighting for those patents, all of those court dates, that really wore down his psyche and his physical strength and contributed to his death. Is the Wright brothers' patent for the control system still valid today? As it turned out, the government eventually stepped in and said, we have to stop these lawsuits. And they organized a patent pool, which allowed people to share this technology freely. For the Wright brothers, it was really more about the morality than it was about the money. They felt they were in the right. People were wronging them by stealing their ideas. Their convictions were so strong that that was all they needed for justification to continue that fight in court as long as it took. 